petitions that the Supreme Court is hearing on same-sex marriage and legalizing it. You're arguing in favor of, uh, of this happening, and, and I thank you for that, because I think all right-thinking people must be on that side of the argument. But the government has argued that this is A, urban and elitist. It, the demand is urban and elitist. B, it doesn't belong to the domain of the courts. It belongs to the domain of the legislature. How do you respond to these two arguments made by the center, Abhishek Singhvi? Well, uh, you may discount everything I say because I, as you have said, I am appearing for a particular cause. Number one, caveat. Number two, I am very careful. I am a little traditional about this. The matter is going on. I finish my arguments. But I don't want to prejudge matters in a sub sense at all. The court will take care of it. I can only give you either a factual response or the grounds or the contentions I raised. What will happen, what the judge will do is for the bench to decide. Three things, Barkha. One is, I have never yet, and I, you can credit me with some experience of the courts, rarely if ever seen the kind of desperate attempt, not once but repeatedly, five, six times by the government, repeatedly, to defer the matter, to prolong the matter, to adjourn the matter, to put it in cold storage. Now, your press has reported it. I don't want to get into details, but the intensity, the degree, the focus, the orchestration of this attempt repeatedly by very, very senior law officers is something unheard of, unsustained. Indeed, what you in the press have quoted as the court's response also was a little stern and uh, strong precisely because the provocation was extreme. Second, this is a question of just turning around on the head the argument we are making to suggest that the legislature should be there. It's actually turning it on its head. Our first argument is, look, we are not touching personal law. Our second argument is, we are not asking you to rewrite anything. Our third, I'm obviously not elaborating, I'm giving you in bullets. Our third argument is very important. Take a particular act as it stands, called the SMA, Special Marriage Act. Don't rewrite a word of it. Do you do interpretation of existing words? Of course, you do it every day. You do it in hundreds of cases. In other cases like Vishaka, you do legislation also, but where there is no existing legislation, there was a vacuum. So you lay down the sexual harassment guidelines. We are not even asking for that. What we are saying is that in five or six places in the SMA, where the word is used is either wife, husband or male, female. You have to simply use the word spouse or person. One. Two. We are saying, why are you, should you use it? Because of the larger constitutional backdrop. The overarching arc of articles 14, 15, 16, 19, 21. What are they? Equality, non-discrimination. That's the heart of my case. La dignity, life and liberty, free speech and expression. What does non-discrimination mean in this case? The right to love, the right to be with a person of your choice, the right to live with that person is available equally to you and me. You are heterosexual. I am non-heterosexual. But you as a heterosexual have a right to convert it into marriage. Hmm. I as a non-heterosexual cannot convert that right to love into marriage. This is clear discrimination. Now, does that sound anything about rewriting a law? Yeah. Ten countries in the world have done it by interpretation. Other countries have followed judicial interpretation. Twenty-three other countries that have passed laws following judicial interpretation. And the other part of the argument is of striking down, which is that the notice regime. So one part is complete interpretation, no legislation. Yeah. The second is striking down an existing legislation. Namely, those parts, what we call sections five to nine, where you are actually inviting disaster. You are there invading privacy. You see, you cannot require your privacy till you are married. After marriage, you perhaps require certain declarations and open them. But before marriage, how can I invoke your privacy and say that before marriage, you, madam, should declare your intent to marry X, keep that intent in a public declaration for one month, invite objections to it. This yeah. is a complete invasion of your private space. So, so these you are, are legal arguments. I am giving you a flavor only to tell you that how shallow and superficial is this objection that you are doing legislation. It's only to avoid, to delay, to prolong, to put in cold storage. 
when when the government makes the argument that a bunch of affiliated uh, laws would have to change even if you you manage to legalize same sex marriage by just uh, reading uh, spouse into man or woman in the special marriage act uh, laws on domestic violence dowry rape adoption surrogacy these would all have to change uh, that's one argument made by the center the other is that now you get on board the opinion of all of the states issue notices to all of the state governments make them party to this uh, this argument what do you say to that the second one is an example in the same line of further desperation i think the honorable chief justice answered it well because as a last desperate measure it was suggested that you adjourn the matter and call every state because what what is the reason varka because they may want to or be entitled to pass laws first of all if you are entitled to pass laws you have to take the permission of the court tomorrow suppose a law has to be passed do you need a permission of the court neither center needs nor state needs second the chief justice responded to that interjection and objection by saying oh very good right now under our nose you have issued notice you you the central government have written to all the states so very good now they know about it even oh. directly otherwise everybody knows about it through the press and they are welcome to come and make their submissions tomorrow if you pass a law suppose you are state x park you pass a law to be tested on article 14 15 16 so it's a fake objection the first objection that you what is the first point you said you said something that you have before. to change other laws that you have ah, to change the other laws now that is 90% wrong for Why? the 10% where it arises those things have been kept aside by the court for example rape is a genuine issue of course it's not such a big issue because conceptually some criminal offenses conceptually are capable only biologically in a heterosexual however with one caveat even in non heterosexual relationships penetrative definitions of rape would apply so in that case the court may take a call later on they don't have to bring it down they can say it's criminal law we we'll await they can specifically make a exclusion that our holding of marriage will not be that rape also this heredity will apply one sentence will take care but 90% of the other examples not told to you barkha are normal irritants of daily life why should you not read person and spouse in place of male or female for your insurance policy hmm. why should you not read person and person or spouse or whatever word you want to see equivalent uh, what is known as a gender neutral word uh, for a, a tenancy agreement for a uh, group housing these are the we have given in my uh, note there is an appendix 3 which gives 20 such examples there is a third category why should adoption not be there you tell me one good reason why you can't read same uh, person or spouse there a very remarkable argument i mean an unbelievable argument i heard from the government side that if you and another person of the same sex adopt a child that child life will be destroyed because both the parents are of the same sex yeah. i mean you know there is no end to the kind of uh, so let me tell you if you if you dig deep you see my appendix 90% of those cases examples i have given would be covered by the spouse spouse or person person defamation where of course you have a few cases section 27 is a exceptional example you can take care of it the court can say we our ruling specifically doesn't apply to 27 which is rape rape in 90 Nine percent cases are heterosexual offence. It can be a penetrative. I mean, men, men, men have been raped by other men. Boys have been yes, sexually yes, assaulted yes. by men. So I mean, actually, it's gendered to the extent that the victim so can be a man or right. a woman, but the perpetrator uh, will all, always. The, be the a question man. is, Barkha, is it yeah. good enough ground to jettison the baby with not. the bath water? There of will be some not. problems, but you throw the baby out of is the course. argument because you have this one example of twenty-seven. That's the argument. Uh, here's my last question on this subject. Uh, what did you make of the Chief Justice wading into, in fact, the global conversations that that's taking place uh, on the distinction between sex and gender? You're born with a sex, but you choose your gender. Chief Justice Chandrachud says your genitals alone do not define what your gender is. I, I am proud. I am proud of a bench forthright and bold enough to articulate. But let me tell you, I started this argument. and mm. the honorable chief justice spoke in that context one of my arguments was that today you have to realize that gender and sex are not binary absolutes mm. 